reason, intellect. And as we move towards skills, knowledge and development, progress, education has always been instrumental in broadening man's outlook on life. It is education that dispels the darks, darkness of ignorance for man himself and for others in the society. Today, if we understand the role and importance of education, it can probably prove to be a panacea for all the problems that we face today in these troubling times, transforming even the darkest stages of our present times into civilizational marvels. Because the first and the foremost role that education aims at is to build strong, enlightened people, put humans in the right direction. As we mark the birth anniversary of Molana Abul Kalam Azad, a man who needs no introduction, certainly not an introductory address, a freedom fighter, the visionary responsible, as Sir Principal Sir rightly said, a visionary responsible not only for streamlining the education system in India, but also foreseeing the start of a bright future where the nation would earn a place of distinction in the world, which eventually it did. A reformer, a leader committed to building a nation through education. A key architect of modern India, particularly of its education system. A scholar, a leader, the member of the Constituent Assembly that drafted independent India's constitution. It's became, he became eventually the first minister of, its, of education, its first vice president, a strong a proponent of high ideals of unity, equality, dignity, and education of all individuals. Maulana Abul Kalam Azad's contribution in the field of education, in the field of nation building, institution building, though exemplary, cannot be easily summed up. Yet it is this contribution that we are remembering today as we celebrate the National Education Day in the year 2020. To get a little perspective on his contributions, we will need to take a time travel to that era, to the times he belonged to, to the times he lived in and struggled during those times. To lay the foundations for a strong developed nation's intellectuals at the time of India's independence had come together from various backgrounds with different affiliations, the different affiliations, religions, you know, they came from different sections of societies. They all come together and helped draft a design for the future of India, the future that we all today hold in our hands as our present. In the, after India's independence, these learn turned specifically their focus on education. It was their vision that they realized that the fundamental pillar in nation building, not just in India, everywhere else too, is education. At that time, um, you know, as I said, it's a time travel. We will have to leave the comfort that of that the living as a generation of 21st century has handed over to us and go back to that time when India, though free, was reeling through you know, centuries of exploitations and oppressions. And it was suffering with you know, widespread literacy, illiteracy, poverty, social issues, all interrelated. <clears throat> Understanding the fundamental role of education, you know, eventually paid, played a very, very, very vital role in the development of the nation. And it was Molana Abul Kalam Azad that gave impetus to most of the, you know, exceptional educational system that was eventually established in independent era, India. Strong, bold measures as the chairman of the, you know, the Central Advisory Board of Education. He uh, gave impetus to adult, adult education. Me, uh, you know, uh, measures were taken to improve and promote primary and secondary education. Not only did he lay emphasis on elementary education, but uh, basically propagated the what we see today as a diversification of the, you know, the secondary education. Today, as educationists, we all know our focus being uh, turned towards skill enhancement and vocational trainings. The foundations of these were laid by this great man. He focused on uh, scientific education and always made efforts to promote a kind of research 
uh, in scientific fields, higher studies, and throughout his life worked for free quality education for all. And it is because of his relentless efforts that we can today boast of some of the most premier educational institutions uh, in India, the Indian Institute of Technology, the Indian Institute of Science, the School of Architecture and Planning, the University Grants Commission, the Central Institute of Education in New Delhi, which is currently the Department of Education in the University of Delhi. My alma mater, Jamia Millia Islamia, is celebrating its 100 years, the centennial this year, and various other institutes of repute in India owe their establishment, owe their foundations to this great son of the soil. And uh, his contribution did not just end with the uh, uh, academic institution, but our cultural and literary centers, Sangeet Natak Academy, the Sahitya Academy, the Lalit Kala Academy, all owe their establishment to this man. It was with his endeavors that after independence, the Indian education system, which was previously accessible only to privileged elites, became accessible to the whole society. Every section, every person from every caste, every creed, every class, every gender that played an important role eventually in empowering the particularly the disadvantaged sections, women, minorities, socially and economically backward sections are marginals and peripherals. None of us, most of us basically would not be here if education was not there for women. I as a women educationist uh, would not be here you know, uh, speaking to such a gathering of educated and learned men and women. Displaying, you know, the firm belief that until we get equality in education, we can't really expect to have an equal society. It is education that would act eventually act as a great equalizer in society and you know, a tool, the only tool available that would level the differences uh, accumulated over centuries. For his contribution and for his service to the nation, he will be remembered and acknowledged by generations to come, not just us, but for all the coming generations. I'm uh, here uh, reminded of a very oft uh, you know, quoted line uh, from uh, Benjamin Franklin, uh, you know, the American scientist, polymath, politician. And he said, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Molana Abul Kalam Azad invested in education. And today, over the course of more than seven decades after independence, the education system in India has evolved gradually but phenomenally. From a literacy rate, uh, I'll do a little bit of statistical you know, analysis of where from he took the reins of education and where it has reached today. His investment and the result of those investments. From a literacy rate of 18%, a mere 18% in 1951, we have moved up to roughly 78% national you know, uh, uh, education literacy rate. And some states even having near absolute literacy, Kerala being one of them. Uh, currently, India is a system where, which, ho which has the strongest and the largest in the world. And uh, we have an enrollment of more than 37,000 students. If it compared to the scenario in 1947, we had merely 400, students, 400 schools. Today, we boast of 1.5 million schools. Then we had 19 universities. Today, we have more than 789 universities, more than 37,000 colleges, and not to talk about the more than 11,000, 11,400 uh, plus standalone institutions. Modernizing knowledge according to the needs of every era that has come after that Today, in the 21st century, we have a system catering to the educational needs of all sections of society. All this because of the visions and efforts of such advocates of knowledge and education, the builders of the nation who worked relentlessly to ensure that education is provided to everyone without any kind of discrimination. How often we find it convenient to forget the pains taken the initiatives, the struggles, the hard work of these great leaders. 
commemorating his birth anniversary is a very small way of acknowledging the contribution that he essentially made in handing over to us a beautiful, a privileged, and entitled and educated present. The real tribute that could possibly be paid to such great men is if we, each one of us, in our capacities as teachers, as educators, as professors, as learners, would contribute in our small ways towards the knowledge and education system in India. As I said, it is uh, the contribution of uh, Ab Maulana Abul Kalam Azad cannot be summed in few words and in just one lecture. But uh, I will like to conclude here with a verse of invocation from Ghulam Ahmed Mahjoor, who is the national poet of Kashmir, to pay my personal homage <laughs> to Maulana Abul Kalam Azad. The verse, I quote, Sahibo satcham me chani vat me asla chavtam. Kut kala roz bezan, zan hyunt mas chavtam. My beloved, my lord, you are my hope and refuge. Show me the path of the righteousness and of rectitude. For how long shall I remain oblivious and ignorant? Show me the vistas of knowledge. I wish that in our lives we could at least try in our little capacities to contribute towards knowledge, towards education, and serve uh, you know, this unending path of the pursuit of knowledge. Uh, stay safe and thank you so much for having me here today, listening to me and bearing with me on this inaugural address. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Madam, for en enriching our thoughts with your wonderful lecture on educational contribution of Mama.